no way that you can supply the needs of you, of your wife, of your kids, of your business, of your friends, of your family, unless God is directing your steps, is guiding your path, and making things happen supernaturally. So when you look at Malachi 3.10, Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithe into the storehouse so there may be food in my house, so that you, you will be blessed. Yep. Same thing, Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, right? Two, two scriptures that I, I hold dear by. So unless you're a tither, unless you're somebody who gives the first tenth, because God can do more with your 90 than you can do with your 100%. Yep. So tithing is like one of the most important things to be financially blessed and to be right. abundantly blessed. And so when you talk about, I'm sorry, I don't want to get off subject, but when we're talking about blessing, there was a lot of casual Christianity in the 1990s and even the early 2000s was like, Lord, I just want enough. God, if you'll just let me have enough to get by so I can have a comfortable life so that I can, so that I can put food on the table and we can live in a house, Lord, that's all I want. That is the lamest prayer any Christian can pray. And probably selfish. Like if, it's if we absolutely look at, selfish. Yeah. Like, because if you're not abundantly blessed, how can you bless others? How can you invite people in? Like, okay, we have been blessed to where we have an area to do a podcast today. Yep. We have 10 people that come and work out here at True Labs HQ that I charge $0 for every day because we have more than enough. Yep. Right? And so we've created this community around us so we can share what God's given us so that we can bless others. Could you imagine that said for anything else? God, just give me enough joy where it only impacts me. God, give me enough peace where it doesn't overflow to others. God, make my house so small that when someone is in need traveling through town, they can't sleep at my place. Oh, man. It, it would just be so weird, right? I know. And, and we were talking about this on the way up. One of the most impactful things to our guys running these events of Christian businessmen, we have guys from ministry that are getting into business and growing something, so they want business tactic. We have guys in business tactic that are like coming back to Jesus. We have guys get saved at every single event that we do, and these guys are already investing 5 to 30K. So they got into it knowing they didn't just show up randomly to it. And inside of that, the last event that we had, we talked about finance. And one of the number one things we talked about first was tithing that it's, you just talked about. It's so important. And I know that— I'm Turn uh, my phone on. Do not disturb. Yeah, you're great. That We <clears throat> talked about tithing, and two of the three top takeaways that we took right off the bat, and these guys are running 5 to $20 million a year, the three people that, that gave the takeaway, two of them were— I'm not tithing. I never really understood it. And that's my number one takeaway going back home is this is what I'm going to do for you. Was this something that was modeled also in the household? Cause there's Christians that don't even know about tithing. Like yeah, Christians it, that, I mean, bro, there's people, and I don't know what, what you think about this, but there's people out there, even people I know that are like, if you're in debt, you don't tithe. And I'm like, what a great excuse not to tithe. Yeah. All you have to be is a little bit in debt. And you're like, well, I can't tithe this month because I'm in debt. Yeah. I have credit card. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like, but it takes that example. I have a friend of mine that of 2018 and beyond, he's made over $5 million a year of personal income, and he's like in his 20s, and he always tithed, no matter how much he made. And when I saw that, I checked myself going, well, I'm in between churches. I'm trying to game it. Well, I don't have a home church. And I, his inspiration was big for me. I was going, wow, what an obedient guy. I want to be like that. Where did you get your example from? Or or how'd you learn? Yeah, it? No, my mom and dad. I mean, it's always been, it's in, been ingrained. So in they me. did it. And I heard bro that generosity, I was just with David green and he said that generosity is one of the biggest influences on kids. Yeah, no, it, it was, uh, very much. It, it, and I don't want it to be legalistic, right? I don't want it to be this thing where you have to tithe because God's up there waiting with a big baseball bat and he's going to hit you over the head. No, that's not it. That it's different because you do it. Because God is so good and he's been so good and you trust him. You know, when you look, there's two options when you look into the future. There's an option without God, which is fear, destitute, poverty, scared, right? Where you have to work 90 hours a week to make it. And then there's the other alternative, which is I see God in my future. So you've got faith, you've got peace, you've got joy, you've got hope, right? When you tithe, you're saying, God, I trust you. I believe that the things that you've said about me, God, God says this in the Bible. He says, he thinks about you more than there are grains of sand on the ocean. Grains of sand in the whole world, that's how much God thinks about you. He's obsessed with you. So you do it to say, hey, God, look, I'm giving this 10% back because I love you and I trust you with my future. So good, man. 